maybe it's because she isn't a giant idiot, but you are, Zeke. You know, the answer was staring me in the face the whole time, Saku. You're right. I am a giant idiot for not even realizing that I'm a giant idiot. <laughs> giant idiot. There we go. Wow, that was a tough puzzle. Well, there we go. Just rotate it around until it works. Oh, goddamn. Time for a little Peter Gabriel on that ass. Oh, who wants some of this? Oh. Man, you like that? Oh, and you see? Do you see that? Sometimes it doesn't even light. Sometimes the Molotov doesn't even light. <sighs> Sorry. Where are they? And also, why am I not karate kicking these guys like I did it or headbutting them? That was in all three alone in the darks was the, like the the shitty karate kick and the shitty fucking headbutt. I think that needs to be in this game. Maybe you just have to be the dude for it for it to, for that to happen. Oh, did it break? It broke. Fuck. Didn't your mom ever teach you not to disturb the dead? Oh, a drink! Mmm, delicious. Oh. God, I love it when games slow down my fucking movement. Such a delight. Such a treat. The chapel in Jeremy's book. It looks like I need more medallions to open it. Okay. I'm not sure I have everything I need. Neither are we, sweetheart. Welcome to life. Uh, Copper Hawk, thank you for the 10 months. Oh, my Rusty Spoon, thank you for the 40 months. Earlier. Appreciate that. to do, but whatever. Getting late here in Sweden. Enjoy and watch you struggle. Well, thank you, Mr. Kano. Have a good night. And I wish you all the success on your, uh, on the game. Hope it sells a gajillion copies. I mean, if that matters to you. You might have already made your paycheck and it doesn't matter how well it sells. But either way, I wish you success. That shovel lasted exactly as long as I needed it to.
Well, kind of. Would like to keep having my job, though. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I suppose it would make sense to be, like, not wanting your name associated with a piece of shit. <laughs> it's like, I worked on Alone in the Dark. Oh, that piece of shit? Maybe don't put that on your resume. <laughs> Uh, it's actually pretty fun to see you play that game. Yes, in the end, it was a good decision that you started it. I enjoy the stream a lot right now. Oh shit, sorry, yeah. wrong, wrong chat. Yeah. Yeah. It's an old joke, sir, but it checks out. I was about to let them through. Is this that bad? No, squirrel melch uh, squirrel mecha. I was I was doing a hypothetical situation. I guess I could have picked a different game name for my hypothetical. I'm j I was just saying like, you know, as a dev, you probably wouldn't want your name attached to it, uh, something that was poorly received. Like even if you worked your ass off, people are gonna go. You know, like, oh, you worked on, uh, um, what was the game that was, what's, what's a game in recent memory that was just a real fucking turd? Gollum, King Kong. There you go. Redfall. Right. So if you were one of the... One of the devs on that game, no matter what, no matter if you had anything to do with its, it being successful or whatever, it's just a tainted name. And, you know, maybe you leave that off your resume. <laughs> now it's like, I worked on Gollum, and they're like, ooh. Ooh, you did? Ooh. Yeah, yeah the, name, the name itself becomes radioactive. That's a good way to put it. Even though it's like, no, I did the audio design and that was, go, go play it, like, just, just listen to it. It's really good audio design, I swear. Yeah, screw you, pa oh, damn it. You know what? Shoot you through the bars. What, wait, what? Oh, there we go. Holy shit! I shot him so hard his fucking jaw stayed in the goddamn cage! Look at that! Just shot his fucking face all the way off except for the jaw! That got- that stayed! No, I saw, funny enough, I saw a speed run of the Kong game at a, at a GDQ or a hot fix or what, something like that. And it was basically just them jumping out of bounds and then running to the end for like 15 minutes. Like, give or take a couple of different spots, that's what they did. And that's fucking hilarious. And they showed you how to do it and it wasn't that hard to get out of bounds. It wasn't like some cool, like, I take this and I back up and it's a frame perfect thing. It's like, no, you just jump over here and you're out of bounds. It's like, you just jump over there? You don't have to do anything special? Like, nah. Nah, you can just get out of bounds. <laughs> oh shit, okay.
Yeah! Ah! Oh, I'm on fire! I'm on fire! Why aren't you on fire? Now, is it the same kind of weapon as it was in the forest? Oh no! Oh, you beat their ass with the crucifix! <laughs> Power of Christ compels you and makes you bleed. Christ concusses you! <sighs> Perfect. No notes. I see now. Okay. Okay, then the opposite. <gasps> Rip devil. Rip that devil. Nothing. No. Missed. That was a clean. That was a clear miss. Oh shit. Um. Okay. Why am I not using him? No! Okay, good. I can come back. Oh, no! Jesus! Jesus, let me through! Jesus! Ooh, seven shotgun shells. Nice. A little refresh there. The sacrifice. The blood of the lamb. There we go. <laughs> How do we defeat these enemies? Quick! Quick! Do what Jesus would do. Turn the other cheek. Ow! Now my other cheek hurts! <sighs> I made it out.
¡Ave María! Emily, is that you? Jeremy. What are you doing here? Well, you sounded so miserable in your letter. I've come to take you away from here. I can't believe I made such a foolish mistake. All I wanted was for you to stay away. What do you mean? I bargained with the dark man. A pact to keep New Orleans safe with my own life as tribute. The dark man isn't real, Jeremy. There is nothing he can do to hurt you. How do you think any of this is happening? How do you still not trust my words? Fine. Then let me help. Don't be foolish. He will bury you next to me in his sunken temple for an eternity. I don't care. I'll find a way. I have my own talisman, and I know about Tarawaya. Oh, wait, 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 don't speak. I know just what you're saying, so please stop explaining. Who's in here? <coughs> Show yourself. You know who, Emily? He took your grandfather. No, I mean it. Who's in here? I can feel someone's in here. Mind if I appear? It's Ra Ra Rasputin. I'm an Apopa. <laughs> Tarawea. Why do you want to go there, Jeremy? It's the lead singer from Ghost. Oh God, he's here. Did you flashy thing me? Tell me! How many times have you flashy thing me? I've seen so many strange occurrences lately. Memories explode into existence and then burn out like tired glass bulb filaments. Dreamscapes crash down from the stars and sink into the sea. Doors that lead to nowhere and absolutely everywhere at once. With all this reverie, I want to think there's a chance that you found a way to remain alive in some way I cannot fathom. Just like I've learned to navigate with my talisman, maybe you, with all your knowledge, you somehow knew a way, a way to find me again, perhaps in... Cockerilla. Oh, my love. Jeremy. Oh, finally, the luggage key. I need to find out more about Jeremy's pack with the Dark Man. He meant to go to Tarawea. Maybe there is something there that would help. She was beautiful. I wonder what happened to her. She looks like she's just sleeping. What? Oh my God! She was just sleeping. Holy Jesus! Kill her! <laughs> In fact. Jesus! Kill her! <laughs> okay. Perosi's fate remained a mystery to Emily. Was she a part of Jeremy's story? Or did she maybe have her own? We did not steal this storytelling mechanic from Alan Wake. This mechanic has been around for a while, but once something gets popular, you're always associated with it forever and ever. Uh, Jer they're in Jeremy's room. There we go. Last door on the right. All right, let's open up his Cleveland steamer. I, that's not funny because he actually was from, he went to Cleveland and there's a Cleveland, you know, stamp on it. It's a telescope lens. Well, why would he lock it in here? Do you mean this? This accent? 
Kill Ann. Kill Ann. Go into the light, Kill Ann. This house is clean. Uh. Jeremy There's, had found oh, the telescope. Right, the telescope's in the uh, library, sitting room. Drawing room, which is downstairs. Yes. <laughs> Telescope. In the drawing room by Colonel Mustard. Oh, I'm sorry. You were very close, but not correct. And it was this way. Wait. God damn it. Oh, I gotta go through the library through the small parlor. Okay, that's fine. Not that one. Not that. Oh, oh, it's the door with fucking library on it! Good God, man. And the talisman, yep. Why is co-streaming instead of watching Zeke? Cause fucking he got to play Dragon's Dogma a day early. Like did you know that like Co loves money? Is that not like I thought that was apparent to everybody. Go to the dining room. Uh, great. So uh, where is that? And the flowers. He loves money more than he loves Zeke, to be accurate. No, he loves money more than he loves his own kids. I mean, he told me that in confidence. Forget I said that. I mean, he's not alone. I love money more than I love my own kids. I mean, I throw my children in the in the toilet in the garbage can. Like that's how much I love them. Dining room is yeah. Right. Right here. Yeah.
Well, now my kids just <laughs> now my kids just live and die in my balls. <laughs> Yeah. They don't go nowhere. <laughs> I need the key. Oh, I got to go through the grand parlor to the dining room. Now, which one is the grand parlor? Not this way. Oh, I can't even get there. It's that door is locked. The pizza door st servant stairs is locked. Oh, oh, got to do the stairwell thing again. Okay. <clears throat> Go up the servant stairs to the mezzanine. Okay. Yeah, Co showed up. Co showed up and he raided me. That's why I have way more viewers than I deserve. Because Co's people, they have a lot of pity in their soul. A lot of pity to give. I mean, obviously. Oh, that's private. No, see, I just want to make it clear, like, I can badmouth Ko because he's a friend of mine, and we've touched tips before. Like, I feel like it gives me the right to say shit. I don't think you guys should, though. Until you've touched tips with somebody, I don't think you can talk shit about them. Uh, Chronicle giving a sub to Negatron Bear! Alright. I'm in- oh fuck, I'm in the fucking sitting room. No, I need to go- oh shit, I can't go that way. Oh, to the, oh, I need to go to the mezzanine, so I just need to go back out and take the second right. There we go. Oh, never mind. Thought I could go that way. I can't go this way. Oh, but this is open now, right? Yeah, there we go. Okay. You know, I haven't tried going up yet. Let me see what's up here. Yeah, what's in here? Zippity doo dah. Sound like someone fell down the fucking stairs. Sub, baby. Ugh. Ah, I hear what there's more of that unsettling rot. On the commonplace of evil. 
There lies virtue and stark irreverence, careless thoughts of luminous indifference. But blame not the beast we once were, which science so often wished to refer. Not the wicked full of sin, it is you who stand and grin. All our good intentions aside, whereupon we build our pride. Sunless solitude, follow not this corrupting light. Prophets of confidence always crashes out of sight. Hear me, for we all bear this mark. Thus we must remain alone in the dark. Badoosh! But they didn't put the in. They didn't put the in in there. See, they missed it. Thus we must remain alone in the dark. Come on, it's the fucking name of the game, guys! This is the one thing you don't fuck up here. Thus we must remain alone in the dark. In! In right there! Come on, guys! You're dropping the ball! That's a big ball drop right there. <laughs> it's the Lord of Ring Gollum all over again. Oh, well, that's creepy. I'm just going to go ahead and Take a shot with Jesus on this guy. There you go. Just making, making sure. Just making sure. <clears throat> Was this dream of Tarawea without a cat? The gate will open in the dining room. I'm in the fucking dining room. What? What else is there to interact with? Oh, it's, oh, it's this. Chapter three. Big trouble and little alone in the dark. Wait, no. Oh, it's concentrating Keanu. Just take, take that book out of his hand and put a muffin there and you got it. I know Kung Fu. You should not have come, Emily. How do you know my name? Have we met? In a manner of speaking, as a manifestation of Yermi's deepest desires, I am to you unfamiliar, yet I know of you. Are you Jeremy? Is that what you're saying? I am only his subconscious thoughts. I cannot speak for his totality. How come you have a Spanish accent? And what is this place? Is this Tarawea? This is indeed the fabled convent of Tarawea where Jeremy goes to find peace during his sessions with Dr. Gray. It's all fantasy, then. Based on the things he has read and seen. And that includes you? Yes. My name is Juan Luis Jorge. Jeremy once read a book of mine. It stuck with him. Can you so his name is John Lou George? Jeremy in English? Sounds much better in his to language. Honor his word to the dark man. Why? What's the point? I don't understand what the pact is for. The people of Derseto are calling upon evil to enter this world. Your uncle offered his soul to the Dark Man to contain this disaster. What? No, that doesn't make any sense. The pact will be fulfilled at dawn. As the sun rises, Jeremy will forever be entombed in his sunken desert temple. As promised, the Dark Man shall quarantine and starve the evil inside Derseto. What about all the patients and the staff? They will not stand the chance. That's unacceptable. How could Jeremy agree to this? Desperation, of course. Jeremy did not choose martyrdom lightly. Well, nothing is lost yet. I'm sure I can find a way to break the pact and save Jeremy. And hopefully the people at Dorsetto. What even is this evil you're talking about? I don't know much. I think some nightmarish entity from the bayou. I'll just have to deal with that later. First, I have to get Jeremy out of his deal. What? Did you run out of arguments? You're actually quite inspiring, Miss Emily. If we put Jeremy's feelings aside, I would have to say I agree with you. Really? 
you might just be able to save but I'm a woman and this is the 20s I think you should take a look in the convent library try to find the truth about Yermi's relationship with the dark man okay you should know that you won't be alone in those grand halls the dark man has been reading those books for years fuck I forget He's we're in the 20s here. again You'll I totally to forget that dude careful of course I I can be careful good luck Miss Emily All right, I have to take a break. Let's continue on. We just had a talk with Spanish Keanu. See if he has anything else to say. What is the dark man, do you know? The black sun, the stalker among the stars, the crawling chaos. No, neither I nor Jeremy knows what he truly is. That's too bad. That would have been helpful. Uh, Ferio, thank you for the 80 months. <clears throat> Zeke, hairy assholes, yay or nay? Not sure what you mean. In regards to what? Eating it like groceries? In which case, nay. No, if, I mean, in most situations, I'd rather it not be a hairy asshole. I, I'd rather my ha asshole not be hairy, but I'm not. It doesn't bother me enough to go get it waxed. If it did, I would. But if you're talking about like an asshole to look at or make a an oil painting of, then just suffice it to say that I'm I'm glad Katie just takes it upon herself to take care of that on her own. Minnie, I get what you're saying, but I've never liked the phrase too much information because that's never been a thing for me ever. I don't think I've ever said that's too much information. All information is good information to me. Yes. Describe your warts. So I know what to look for in case I get them myself. Oh. Oh, it's like Faust. Making a deal with the the hot red red robe devil. Let's see, would you like a little Jesus upside the head? Okay, he's good. He's good. I tested him with Jesus. Hmm, there's something missing. A cross! I have a cross! No? Okay. Rip devil. <laughs> Ooh, spooky game, my underwear, my problem. <laughs> I don't think this game is gonna make you poop your pants. It's not, I don't think it's that kind of spooky. I mean, it's it's a lot like Resident Evil. Like, Resident Evil games, like, they have a few jump scares here and there, and they're eerie and creepy, but they're not like, you know, scary. great library it was endless beautiful and terrible an akashic record for the universe inside the mind of jeremy hotwood now corrupted by a story forced upon him 
told by a maniacal <clears throat> liar, an evil conjured by science and secrecy. I will suspend a room and lock away the foundation of his character. Its key will be left to the librarian, the only thing invisible to the Frowler. Uh, this guy is either, he has a, like a cleft palate, a hair lip, something like that, or he's missing lips. Like, this is how, like, you know, like, how they talk in a horror game, like a skull that doesn't have any lips. You know? Because you can hear him try and say, say words that, like, with, like, B or P sounds. Invisible to the, to the father. So if you see anybody with a, with, you know, a fucked up lip, then you know that's the person who wrote that. How would you describe your current voice in terms of video game characters? Shitty old prospector? I kind of got that scratch in my voice no matter what I do, and I keep hawking and spitting a lot. Unmasked evil. Oh, I've got it. I've got the unmasked evil, the gazing statuette, and the mummified cat. Great. Gotta catch them all, creepy mon. Yeah. <laughs> I choose you, mummified cat. <laughs> Go, mummified cat. All your attacks are not effective on him, but neither are his. There we go. The key of Hubertus. No, Elsa! Elsa the knight said, don't take the... Don't take the symbol beyond the seal! Starting a little early there. Hmm, there's something missing.
Oh shit! Oh, actually, that wasn't a bad idea. If I just spend too much time in the dark man's fart cloud, then I die. And I think that's what happened. The first time. Dark as shit. He played his he played his Uno reverse card. Oh damn! <laughs> He's like, I reverse it. Shit! <laughs> God damn! I'm saying, dude, that was that's pretty good. I gotta admit, that was pretty surprising. Tells me to shush. Goddamn motherfucker shushed me. I think I lost him. I gotta try something. You just drop the shotgun and blow your head off. Okay. 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 I, I thought even I thought she was gonna like do the you know the you know big long double barrel in the mouth. Nope. She's like ah fuck that, and out she goes. Uh, you 
look at this. Just climb on this or jump, jump that short little gap there, huh? No, no, no. Migo, I was gonna say the Kurt Cobain, but I didn't know if it was too soon for that. But you know what? I bet Kurt would have laughed. I mean, if he wasn't suicidally depressed like he always was, but you know what I mean. You, you, you understand. It smells like demonic spirit. It was an <laughs> through the night with the restless crowds. He was a kind of itinerant showman who held forth in public halls and aroused widespread fear. The New Orleans address of the event is lost, but I remember distinctly the Prex shipping company pressing their contribution. Emily! You know what? Jack Burden says at a time like this. He says, "What the hell?" He's in my head, Juan. His breath replacing mine. You should not have come, Emily. <laughs> oh. Heart-shaped buckshot. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta say, like, the reason why I was a little apprehensive to mention Kurt Cobain is because when I first listened to Nirvana, it, like, blew my mind. Ooh, well, shit! Well, it isn't my new best friend. Better choice of words for that. Come, join me for some giggle water. Ah, uh, Ruth? Oh, Miss Hartwood, don't tell me you've been out swinging without me. Ruth, what is this place? Where are we? Have you never been to the Maccabean before? Goodness me. Tell me, Miss Hartwood, have you ever considered going out for an evening? Are we in New Orleans? I really ship these guys. Well, I, I hope that happens. Anymore. I just went inside the Grand Parlor and suddenly here I am. The Grand Parlor? Can I get back to Dorsetto from here? <laughs> Are you sure you want to? We could stay here and drink the night away. How about a gin fizz? I have never had a gin fizz. Because gin is gross. If this is New Orleans, maybe well, I should go further. Well, grosser than most liquors. Find that magic show the book was talking about. But there was no address, just Craig's shipping company. Oh, is this about where Jeremy met the dark man? How do you know about that? Jeremy talked a lot about the dog man. I always felt a bit envious. How so? If you like a gin fizz, you should try a new one called the Finn Jizz. Me any interest? I'd at least hear him out. I'm sure he has plenty to offer. I don't think you'd want that, Ruth. We're too sweet for such darkness. <laughs> oh, please. What kind of blue nose do you take me for? I relish the darkness. I think it suits me. <laughs> you don't happen to know how to find the Prex shipping company, do you? Of course. Their office is just over there. Whoa, what happened? You just got lucky. <laughs> A bientôt, Mademoiselle Emily. Hey, do you know where my uncle is? No, but I bet you're close. Blue Nose. A priggish or puritanical person. Or, the second definition, a person from Nova Scotia. <laughs> Which I think is kind of funny.
Huh. Now, Blue Nose, like, from Nova Scotia, I get because of, you know, like, cold, right? Blue Nose are cold. Um. But the, the puritanical thing, I don't know where that comes from. Because, I mean, brown nose, I get. Because you have your face, you have your nose up someone's ass, meaning you're an ass kiss. A blue nose. Hmm. We're not talking about blue knees, though. We're talking about blue nose. Different thing. Different thing. It was in the hot autumn that I went through the night. Or the hot autumn. Restless crowds to witness the enigmatic black pharaoh. He was a kind of itinerant showman. Who held forth in public halls and aroused widespread fear wherever he performed. It was the sort of thrills my father sought out. Especially if there was a promise of electrical trickery. The Norland's address of the event is lost, but I remember distinctly the Prext Shipping Company pressing their contribution in the morning papers. There were rumors of an Egyptian sarcophagus being a part of the act, something which kept me wondering how they had carried that up the seemingly endless stairs. The details of the showman's performance have almost been entirely replaced by dread. The kind that numbs and hides the terror of something unbearable. What is certain is that ever since that night, I can't remember a single day passing without seeing or sensing the presence of a dark man. Price Shipping Company. According to the book in the Great Library, they assisted a showman performing somewhere in New Orleans. It's somehow connected to Jeremy's introduction to the Dark Man. I'm sure I can find the address inside. still burning yeah yeah you like that yeah, yeah you like that mm. yeah jesus 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 in your face jesus to you the power of christ concusses you The power of Christ concusses you! Rip Devil! I really hope this crucifix is like a non- the only non-breakable uh, melee weapon in the game. I doubt it, but that would be really cool if it was. From what I read, Blue Nose came from the same place as Blue Blood, like aristocratic. Okay, okay, okay. That makes sense, then, yeah. No, I think after the crucifix, melee weapon breaks, you have to wait three days and then it's, then it's back together again. <laughs> but you do have to wait the three days. Yeah. Dave's key. <laughs> you tell him, Steve Dave. Oh. 
Hasn't broken yet. Maybe I can move all that junk out of the way with the crane. Oh my god, typewriter ribbon! Look at that! I wonder what that's a reference to. Like the fucking fun part, I don't even get to do it. Christ! Christ compels you! Christ! 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 Christ compels all of you! Oh, Jesus broke! Oh, Jesus broke! Ah! Ah! This is my boomstick! Any of you primitive screwheads want to come get some? I started blasting. I was gonna say that guy's dead. <sighs> well done. <laughs> Cause he's burnt like a steak. I'm the one that said just grab them in the biscuits. I look funny. Yeah. But yo, I'm making money, see? So yo, world hope you're ready for me, so gather round. I'm the new fool in town, and my sound's laid down by the underground. Drink about the henny you got on your shelf? So let, just let me introduce myself. My name is Anna. Pronounced with banana. Oh wait, no, her name's not Anna. <laughs> That was the fake name I gave for my children to my mom just now, just a little bit ago. I just like how polite uh, Humpty Hump was. Because he was like... All the rappers in the top 10, please. He said, please allow me to bump thee. He didn't demand. He didn't say, look out while I bump thee. He said, please allow me. And I just respected that courtesy.
It's like, you can be a rapper and be polite still. Just look at Humpty Hump in the digital underground. And he didn't, he, and funny, also, he never told you to do the Humpty Hump. He said the Humpty Dance, or the Humpty Dance, he said the Humpty Dance is your chance to do the hump. He didn't say, you must do this dance. He said, here's your chance. If you want to, I'm giving you the opportunity. And I thought that was very, very courteous as well. Yeah. He gave you an option. All right. I made it inside the warehouse. <laughs> now let's find that address. Wow, there's a lot of liquor in here. Wait, is this a bootlegger? Oh, I'm not supposed to be here. Oh, a horn. Oh, good. Hey, I got the horn, the crucifix, and the watch. Those obviously go together. Hey, DePay, thank you for the 84 months, seven fucking years. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll just come. I'm sorry, I've just come. Fire poker, you bet. Machine gun cartridge in a box that looks like a harmonica box. <laughs> like, don't mix those up. You're gonna have a bad time. This is getting ridiculous. I mean, I'm not complaining. Yeah! No, I will not be playing the remake. The horn, the crucifix, and the watch, the little known Narnia adjacent book by C.S. Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad they gave you the Tommy gun, because that is a direct reference to the old game, because you got a pistol and a Tommy gun and a shotgun. I don't fucking know what the combination is. Our ship was raided while in dock. All of his things were recovered, but blood was shed. Several men were carried into the Mississippi River and drowned by ones who live in the deep. All items have now been signed and delivered. Now let's keep the papers safe. What is left? Later is right. And hell is back again. I'm guessing it's just four, five, four. Nope. Oh, he said what is left. So four, oh, left. Four. Okay, that's it, right there. You don't have to go back around. Gotta go manifest on September 19th, 1892. <clears throat> Black Shipping Company delivered four steamer trunks, one Egyptian sarcophagus, and a large wooden crate belonging to the showman called the Black Pharaoh, performing at Gaitin Street. There it is, our clue! To Gallatin Street! This is it. The address to the theater where Jeremy first met the dark man. <laughs> I just want to see him and go like, they all call me that. I'm Dave, I'm Haitian, like what the fuck? D call me by my name, please. Oh, 
Oh, there you are. Well, that didn't break like I wanted it to. There we go. Ow, I'm on fire too. It's like she was holding a cartoon stick of dynamite and the roadrunner like tricked her. Like, well, back to the drawing board. <laughs> me, me. Flame on him so sweet like an ice bonbon. Thank you for the 26 months. I don't know that one. Flame on, I'm so sweet like a nice bonbon. I don't know that one. I'm sorry. I'd, I'd rattle it off if I knew it, but I, I just don't. I'm sorry. It's Beastie Boys. Which, which Beastie Boys song, though? I know a few of them. But I definitely do not know their entire library. Oh, it's from Intergalactic? I know most of Intergalactic and it didn't ring a bell. But then again, if you listen to songs without actually looking at like the lyric sheet, you make up your own shit. So I'm sure I heard something different. Oh, it was body moving. Okay, body moving. Now that one I'm not as familiar with as Intergalactic. You find all of BC Boys to be annoying, to be honest? I understand that completely. Their voices are not easy on the ears, uh, typically. They have this fucking whiny fucking Brooklyn voice! Like that! And I get it. I happen to enjoy it, but I can see how people wouldn't. It's like some people love Bob Dylan. Like, he's, there's no question he's objectively a good singer or a good songwriter. But, like, his voice, I'd rather hear cats fucking. Like, my, my buddy is an audiophile. He's a music file. Like, he loves all types of music. And he's like, I like Bob Dylan, like, his voice and stuff. He's like, you can't be serious. He's like, yeah, it's unique and it's different. I'm like, all right, but fuck, man. I hate it. And some people are like that with, like, Tom Waits. Tom Waits is another one that's not necessarily palatable for all. But I love it. I love his voice. That's how you feel about Rush. Yeah, I get that too. That. Like, oh God. Like, get out of your head. Sing, sing with your chest, not your fucking nose, dude. Your map is of no use here. <laughs> no, I honestly like 
speaking of voices, that's probably one of the things holding me back from having more viewers. I'm sure. Not just the voice I have now, but like my voice throughout the 10 years. It's a little abrasive and scratchy and, you know, I've got a smoker's voice. And that's not appealing to a lot of people. I mean, if I had a buttery soft voice, I bet I would have like a few hundred more regular people that would come here. Am I sick? I don't know. I'm going to the doctor soon to check it out, but my throat's been bo not, not bothering me. It doesn't hurt. It's just been overly scratchy, like more than normal. It feels like there's something on my vocal cords and it feels like there's something like, like in my, like in the back of my throat, like, you know, just, just on the other side, like, you know how your, your throat, like is like, like a, a junction, right? Like this is my tongue. It's like right here on the, just over the junction of your tongue, your mouth and your throat. It's like right here, there's like a lump that I just can't quite like swallow it or whatever. It's weird, and, but it doesn't hurt at all. Uh, Chronicle, thank you for giving a sub to Shug Zed or Shug Zed. That's why I'm not looking it up, Chronicle. That's why I'm not looking it up. I've I've resisted the urge to Google or WebMD it because it's always lupus or cancer. And it's never lupus. You shouldn't have come. Don't say that. You needed my help. All I wanted was to keep people away from Dissetto. Especially you, Emily. You're the only one in the family who forgave me for choosing old age over death. Father still cares for you? He is paying for your treatment at Dissetto. To get rid of me! That's the only reason anyone's at Dissetto. Someone in the family thought you were becoming an embarrassment. Help me get you out of this mess, Jeremy. I want to take you away. Your father would send me right back. What if I take you up north, to Kingsport? I know Mother still has What if I take you there. to a I farm up north? You, you can run around all the rest of your days. I haven't been to Massachusetts in years. I still paint from memory, you know? That old lighthouse makes for a great motif. Your father and I would go almost every summer. Then when our great uncle died, we stopped going back. What is there to be done about the dark man? He's the one holding you back, right? You feel like you can't leave without paying your debt. Do you mean Davy racist? The dark man has been with me since I was 12 years old. He was standing right on that stage right over there. For a brief moment, his gaze held mine. And that was it. I recognized him for what he was. The heart with Geis embodied in flesh. Geis? I like the way he oh, says curse, Geis. But I was only there to be mocked. Instead, his attention moved on to my father sitting next to me. I turned to him and saw his face. Turned. The widest shade of pale I've ever seen. He bit off his tongue that night and suffocated. Oh, like multiple mix. What can be done, Jeremy? Please. There's a way. Two ways, to be exact. One worse than the other. A written contract, now buried inside his sunken temple. Don't you remember what it said? <gasps> I don't want to. Try, Jeremy. What did the contract say? No, we can't. We can't let Norman suffer that blight. I have to make this sacrifice. What are you talking about? Is this the thing from the bayou? 
Juan said something. <laughs> So there is a way to break the pack, at least. Hoping this will reunite the flame the between Zeke temple. and the original alone in the dark. PLS Pappy Zeke sausage. No. <clears throat> uh, have you been having like a frog in your throat for months? I'm pretty sure I got COVID last June last year, and mucus has been a massive problem since. I did get COVID, but that was a while ago. That was a good long while ago. And this just cropped up like a few weeks ago. So, I mean, they could be related. But I'm not sure. I think it's doubtful since they're so far apart. I just woke up one morning and my voice was scratchy and I had like a a frog in my throat. But I will check and see if my uvula is swollen. I haven't I haven't really looked. Um, whoever said that. Oh, there's a third symbol. I didn't see the third symbol. Uh, Deuce MH. So H is big. Deuce is middle and M is small. H, H, Deuce, M. Two. Five, eight, two, five, eight. Oh, look for the barbecue and the chair. Barbecue in the chair. God damn. I I that's why I'm that's why I'm gonna go to the doctor. Cause I'm hope I'm hoping like <laughs> I'm hoping like the doctor's like, yeah, just come on in, we'll give you like a nice clean on your on your vocal cords and your tonsils and shit. We'll just like Fucking power, power wash them. Get them all sparkly. Does, I mean, I'm not kidding. That's all it feels like. It feels like they just need to be like, like sandblasted a little bit and I'll be fine. You got that gargle going? These nuts! Unless, were you not going there with that? I thought. No, uh. I'm sorry, please continue. What, what gargle? I've tried the, the I've tried the saltwater gargle. I've tried tea and stuff, but like, it helps for a little bit, but it, it by no means like clears it up. I mean, if if that would have cleared it up, like I don't think this would would have lasted like the weeks that it has. There's something like a little bit more hearty sticking to my vocal cords. I need to get down there somehow. Well, I'm gonna put an anchor on that as soon as I find one.
Yeah, I... It, it honestly, it doesn't feel serious. It feels like someone said, like, there's a residual, it's like a residual from COVID or something stupid like that. But I'll, I'll let you guys know. The temple of Nefronka lies under our camp. Despite all efforts, that unholy site did not collapse, but sink beneath the sand. The pharaoh is long dead, his name meticulously stricken from all ancient writing. But that stage meant for blood and terror remains. The temple is said to be lightless, built to harbor all the haunters of the dark found in the very depths of our universe. What up, Sticky Nugs? Calling on Thank the you for 45 months. And creating a bridge between our world and theirs. The terrible Aldebaran of Taurus, the Black Sun, was seen as the most important star in the night sky. Because according to the Kitab al Aldebaran? It was said to be the home of the That's the whiskey chaos, no that they place. drank in Star Trek. Yalla. And all he could say about it was, it's green. Through ancient mechanisms, it was said that the priests could open shafts channeling the light emitted by that strange stone called the Shining Trapezohedron. Several streams pooled together above the statue of that dark man would then be sent through space towards the Black Sun. A message to the gods. The gifts bestowed on the sender are completely undocumented, but often assumes to involve dark blood pacts, where souls are traded for malicious miracles. Mm. Who's Liam O'Brien? Do I know Liam O'Brien? Oh, Critical Role? No. I don't want... I've never watched it. Oh. My machine gun is full. Good God! Ho oh, ho! Shit! Now that is a proper rat a tat tat. Also, don't look directly into that. Whatever you do, don't look directly into that eclipse. Ha ha! I burned your retinas. Now you'll be president. Okay, you can do this, Emily. Just got called the wild, the angler for free from Epic Game Store using the code Ezekiel underscore III in the creator code window of the checkout menu. Again, that's a code. Ezekiel underscore III in the creator code window at the checkout menu. What a great deal! Indeed it is. Are eclipses more harmful than staring at the regular sun? I've heard. I don't know, though. Constellation Taurus. The big star is Eldebran. Something to do with the Dark Man. I've seen this in a dream, but as a shallow pit of darkness. This is definitely where the contract is hidden, but how do I get to it? <laughs> I didn't pay Wax a million anything for that. And I'll, I'll say this about the Epic Game Store. They've been great to me. Like, I don't make a gajillion dollars, but like... There's no contract or anything. They're like, "Hey, we will give you a we'll give you a code, and everybody, every time someone uses that code, if they you know go to checkout at Epic Game Store, we'll give you some money." 
And that's it. That's all it, all it's been. And I get like a, a little a little bit of money from them every single month. And I basically have to do nothing. I'm just waiting for them to go like, we're going to stop doing that because you basically do nothing for us. You know? Sending these things. Time for a little night night juice! Who else wants to go night night? You! You! You ugly motherfuckers! Now those things were actually pretty terrifying. Those are like that's like the mist shit happening, and that's no good for me. The mist is one of the most, for me, one of the most terrifying movies I've ever watched. I hate. I'll just say I hate swarms of things or or large bugs of any type. That movie just thinking about it makes my fucking skin crawl. I should put in the lens carrier. Maybe a banana. Hmm. Yeah, the ending though. That ending stuck with me. That was phenomenal. I think this one works. Is that John Wick, my son watching The Matrix? Oh yeah, you have to tell me how that goes. You're letting your kids watch The Matrix for the first time. And also, is that John Wick instead of is that Bill from Bill and Ted? You're giving your, son, your, your children culture in the wrong order! Or Ted. Whatever, Ted. Ted Theodore Logan. Sorry.
Wow, none of these cat boxes have been opened or have had anything in them yet. I really, really, really want some more machine gun bullets, please. Oh, I'll take a pick. Station! Oh, this looks safe. This isn't gonna come down. I'll be fine. Yeah. Wayne's World or Bill and Ted? Oh, for, for me, Bill and Ted. They're both, they both have merit, but Bill and Ted definitely for me. I think it's because I, I I saw Bill and Ted. When did the when did the Bill and Ted movie come up, come out? Like Excellent Adventure was that eighties? Like late eighties, right? And then Wayne's World was like early nineties. Yeah, eighty eight or eighty nine, and then Wayne's World was like ninety three, ninety four, or something like that. It's Wayne's World hit me uh, like, or excuse me, Bill and Ted hit me when I was younger. And the shit you watch when you're younger that affects you, it affects you more than, uh, like, stuff affects you less and less as time goes on. And that shit, like, had something for me. Now, if you said uh, Bill and Ted or Be Beavis and Butthead, that'd be a tough choice. Because both of those had de had a definite, like, effect on my childhood. You know, that's actually a decent question, like, to ask ask yourself, or you, if you want to talk about it, like, what single, like, IP do you think had the most effect on your youth? On, your, like, your, the formative youth, like, growing up? And I'm talking, like, Transformers would be up there. Beavis and Butthead, Bill and Ted. Uh, TMNT, Ninja Turtles. Jurassic Park, good one. Ooh, early Simpsons, that's a good one. the WWE or WWF back then. That'd be a good one. South Park. Huge. Rocco. Like Rocco's Modern Life I'd be Sammy. Good shit.
Star Trek TNG would be up there for me, definitely. I bet there's a few people would be like, um, Star. I mean, Star Wars, right? I bet there's. I bet there's a, a like. That would be up there for like, like our group of people, like our circles. Like Star Wars might be up there for like a major. Like might be the top. I love you, I be Sammy. And fl flames, fl flames from, from behind my eyes. That hurt. Fifty-seven months of sub on the wall. Fifty-seven months of sub. Burn the bats from their habitats. Laser them down and feed the rats. Thank you, Anubis. I love your rhymes. X Files. X Files would be a good one for a lot of people. Not for me. I missed X Files. Not because I was against it. Just I never, um, never got into it. I just missed it. I guess I didn't watch a lot of Fox other than The Simpsons back then. That's a good question though, like these are all good answers. I'm just trying to think of one that like I would credit the most for shaping my like pop like my pop sensibility or anything like that. from this side <laughs> my monster be good stick yeah I don't think I was supposed to be able to open it from this side I was supposed to come out, come through this door, and those assholes would be waiting for me. But I showed them. Ha <laughs> ha. Twin Peaks. Ooh, Twin Peaks is a good one too, man. I think I missed, I think I missed a big, big, big one. And I think it might be number one for me. If I think about it. <sighs> Dungeons and Dragons. That might be the IP that shaped me the most. If we open RPG, no, 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 Grumpy, Grumpy and Johnny, I meant any intellectual property, meaning anything that's like 
a trademarked name like The Simpsons or X-Files or Legend of Zelda or, you know, some, yeah, piece of art or piece of media or not, not necessarily a piece of art, but like something that would be considered an intellectual property. Yeah, He-Man, G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe would have been big for me, too. G.I. Joe, He-Man, Thundercats, Rainbow Bright. Not My Little Pony. Again, not because I'm against My Little Pony. It's just, it missed, I missed My Little Pony. It missed me, somehow. She-Ra. she -ra. Kim Possible? A little, a little, uh, after my time, but... Oh, there's a Care Bears? Care Bears would be out there too, man. Care Bears were definitely in my, in my age group when they were, uh, getting big. Oh, you know what else would be huge on my list? The Sandman. Neil Gaiman's comic, The Sandman. Holy shit, that would be that'd be well on my list. That opened my eyes, like, not only to storytelling, but the things that comic books can are capable of doing. That was huge, dude. Can I say the Bible? Absolutely! You can definitely say the Bible. If it, if it had, I'm, I'm just saying not, there's no good or bad effect. I'm just saying the most effect. But the Bible isn't necessarily an IP though. So maybe that maybe that cancels it. I think yeah. I think we have to take religious material out because it's not an intellectual property. <laughs> I forgot the I forgot the rules of my own uh, hypothetical stupid thing. It's an IP of Vatican City. <laughs> no, it's not. Tales from the Crypt. Oh, you know what? You know what oddly would be up there for me? Like, if I had to make a top 10, I think it might crack the top 10. And I'm shitting you not. Russell Simmons' Deaf Comedy Jam. That shit changed me. Like... Comedy wise. Like, and it opened my eyes to like black culture. I had none. I lived in Montana. Our black culture was a guy named uh, Chuck. Or <laughs> Actually, his name is Andre, but I just thought I'd come up with a random name. Wait a fucking second here. What do I have to do? Emily felt a wave of despair as she recognized. Oh, to reveal the contract. Did I? Because I'm I'm still missing one. And they didn't. I I wanted to aim that one at the statue, and they didn't. Let me? 
Didn't see him? that way okay in living color absolutely i loved in living color man and I've, i mean and of course being a, a kid like a, a teenager i was like i would say things like let me let me show you something like fire marshal bill or homie don't play that I still remember like one of my favorite jokes I still remember one of my favorite jokes from um, In Living Color where homie homie the clown played by the marvelous Damon Wayans was sitting there at a carnival and he's sitting there like at a guess your weight booth you know at a carnival like they have at a carnival like I'll guess your weight this lady came up one of the one of the actors came up and she goes okay guess my weight and he she steps on the uh, steps on the thing and he goes i'm gonna say you're about one fat bitch <laughs> that crushed me <laughs> fucking died like 14 15 years old like tears streaming down my cheeks like what that bitch and i was like oh my god I, I didn't see that coming that was great Martin, I watched all that shit. After I after I got into Def Comedy Jam, I followed Martin to like other shit. I followed him to uh, his show Martin. I followed Martin to Living Single, which was a fucking great show that never got its propers, I don't think. Shit. Erotica Reed Rev, you might have been the blackest person in Montana in the 90s. Through the barriers of self deceit, temperamental behavior. Is this it? Is this the contract? And suffering you could have prevented. Emily? What He's a doing? big naked baby. Detective, uh, how is your investigation going? You gotta write this shit down, Scott. Well, still you gotta write down every Jeremy's comment they make. Under why and write a, write a coffee table book. This place is full of lunatics planning to perform some kind of ritual tonight. Well, that sounds ridiculous. Or rather, would have just a day ago. It gets worse. 
I have reason to believe they killed anyone who didn't want to go along with the plan. Detective, have you encountered any monsters tonight? I just told you, I think they killed people. Beauregard, the author, Perosi, the singer, Mr. Waits, the clerk, Mr. Chance, the gardener, they're all missing. No, I mean, have you fired your gun tonight? Of course not. They wouldn't just kill outsiders like that. <laughs> it would bring too much attention. But you should keep your eyes open. So you haven't seen anything strange? So you're saying his run is boring then? Anywhere else? What are you trying to tell me, Emily? Are you in some kind of danger? Let me drive you back to New Orleans. I think I have enough. I've killed like 40 demons, dude, and you haven't fired your gun off no, once? I'm fine. Thank you, detective. Once again! The woman does twice the work for half the credit! I'll find your uncle, Miss Hope. Just stay out of trouble. Oh. He must first acknowledge psychological trauma in order to proceed. The lying must stop, so we can break through the barriers of self-deceit. Finally, temper manic behavior. Uh, here's a good one. Who was your Hollywood crush as a kid? Christina Ricci. No question. She's she's only a month older than I am. We are a month apart. And I fell in love with her and Adam's uh, Adam's family. Medicine has failed me. Nothing can be done to dispel the hardwood curse. Curse! Only the sacrificial dagger may release the despair from Jacob's eye. Yet, doing so would be the doom of Dacetto. Let this curse of mine be a weapon for once. I accept your demands. Oh, crawling chaos. Build your prison around this godforsaken hospital. When evil has been starved, I will stay buried forever. No, Kathy Ireland it would definitely, but Kathy Ireland was also an adult. And I was not near her age. So she was more like, oh, that's what women look like. But then I, you know, I being that I was the same age as Christina Ricci, I was like, I want her to be my girlfriend, and she could be. Who was my, oh, my Disney princess crush? Ariel. Redhead, no question. In hindsight, in hindsight, I would say Jasmine is better looking. But... You got a thing, you got a thing! I got a thing! It's getting rough out there. Yep. Okie dokie! Well, um. <clears throat> That'll do it for me today. We got to a decent stopping place. Chapter 4.